at somebody and say, lay your life down. Lay your life down. Lay your life down. Now, this is probably one of the hardest things I had to learn as a believer, how to do this, especially starting out in ministry the way I did with the truth behind hip hop. So I started out with the truth behind hip hop. And at the time, I'll admit, I, I, I had a little spirit of Jehu. Yes, I was out of control a while. And God used that to say what needed to be said at that time because nobody could stop me because I was crazy. And sometimes God needs, hey, sometimes God needs a personality that's impervious to opinion. Amen. That's all through the Bible. All through the Bible. God called Jehu. He knew he was crazy, but he needed somebody crazy to kill Jezebel. And not just Jezebel, but their entire house. Y'all know Jehu, y'all know how crazy he was? In one account of his life, king, he's king, this is king, Jehu of Israel. And they, when they anointed him king, uh, uh, he comes riding in and he goes into the temple of Baal. And he says, I come to worship Baal. And I'm going to give Baal the greatest worship that I can. So y'all let me in. So they let him in. <laughs> he goes in there. He says, now wait a minute now. I want the worship to Baal to be pure. So anybody in here that's not a real worshiper of Baal, I need you to leave. He was clearing the room because he was getting ready to burn the room down. So he's like, so anybody that's not a real worshiper of Baal, you can't be a part of this, what I'm about to do. Because I'm about to give him the greatest praise. The greatest praise possible. So, so just leave. Everybody leave. He cleared the room. Now everybody in here, we all worship with Baal, right? He's like, everybody's in there. Yeah, yes. He said, kill all of them. And they just killed every last one. <laughs> He tricked them. They closed the doors, locked them in, everything, and he killed them all. And God liked it. <laughs> God liked it. Because when Jehu did the fool and didn't do what he was supposed to do toward the end, God said, I'm going to excuse that because of the wonderful thing you did in that temple. <laughs> yeah. And that, that, that's in the Bible. He, he was just, he's one of our favorite characters, very unorthodox and just, you know, but God used him because it reminded me when I was younger. Now I'm, I'm smarter, wiser, older, handle things a little different. But when I first started, I didn't know how to do any of that. So I was just kind of wild. And God, you know, need, God, God needed that in the beginning. But then transitioning from that to pastoring, starting to try to pastor and be around people and that kind of thing, you can't really be like that. You can't be no Jehu and pastor. Every meeting, you want to kill everybody. It just <laughs> You can't, you know, and I was just, I was so edgy and hardcore that God had to take all of that out of me. Then God had to build up a trust or in me to where I would trust people I would give people my heart, like just hand it to them because that's what a pastor has to do. That's what a servant is. And so I, amen. And so I had to learn how to do that because, you know, before I would, I mean, I didn't travel. I didn't need security. When I was doing Truth on Hip Hop, I didn't travel with no security because I wasn't scared of nothing. I was ready to rumble with whoever. You, you try it and let's go. I mean, that's how I was. But now, you know, God taught me how I have to trust people and love people, so I have to lay my life down. So even when they're wrong and I'm right, I still sometimes have to position myself as wrong to heal the situation. Somebody, that's the call of the pastor. <laughs> God is not telling me to do that. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash lay your life down. Do you know if people would lay their life down, nobody would get divorced? Oh, 
if the guilty party would admit that they're guilty or if the injured party would forgive the injury. Yeah. 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 You could get along. You could love your mama. You could love your daddy if you could let stuff go. Lay your life down. If you could lay your life down, you'd have a better relationship. You'd have a better marriage. Yeah, I'm walking heavy now. Okay, let's get into this. It's, I told you it's going to be quick. It's going to be a quick blow. You're going to get hit quick. Now I'm going to take off running. <laughs> the enemy is trying his best to turn people into his disciples instead of being Christ's disciples. That's the conflict. The devil wants to make you his. How does he know you his? Because you act like him. You handle things the way he would. He is selfish and only cares about himself. Isaiah 14 and 13. He said, the Bible says, For thou hast said in thy heart, speaking of Lucifer, you said you will ascend into heaven and exalt your throne above the stars of God. You will sit also a mount, up, upon the mount of the congregation and in the sides of the north. So he, I'm stepping on everybody, including God, to get where I'm going. That's what he said. And he wants you like that. Where you will do anything to get where you're going. You'll abandon your husband, your wife. You'll abandon your children to get where you're going. And those are the people that are like the devil and not like Christ. Yeah. People today are becoming more and more like the enemy instead of like Christ. You know this because their own feelings override their care and concern for others. Their feelings. How they feel. You put how you feel over what is right. right. Yeah. Honor your father and mother. Yeah, but I can't stand her. I can't stand him. Well, it didn't say it mattered how you felt. Yeah. She keep doing me wrong. He keep doing me wrong. They keep doing me that. Well, it, it didn't even say anything about your feelings. Honor them. Yeah, but the devil felt the way. I mean, he felt a way. 2 Timothy 3 and 2 says, For men shall become lovers of what? Now, a lover of their self means that they love themselves more than anything. They'll become covetous, wanting what other people have, boasters, bragging, proud, think they're better than others, Blasphemous, changing the Bible to match what they want. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful and unholy. Y'all, is that 2024? Yeah. I saw all of this on Instagram this morning. And they was preachers. I saw this clip of these preachers got together singing, It's just my imagination. They in a conference, pastors, well-known pastors, and they up there, I guess you'll say, what can make whatever the words are. No, that's my girl. They singing, it's just my imagination. Hell, you's going to correct me. Now, wait a minute, pastor. That's my girl. Yeah, but they was up there singing Just My Imagination.
a prophet can get your credit card numbers, but he can't hear God telling him not to blaspheme and sing that song. I, I just, man, please, this is some foolishness. Why are you singing that? But that's what men are going to become. They love themselves. They love their music so much. They just going to take it back. Hey Amen. In God's house, you should only be singing God's music. You can't come to my house and play just my imagination. And in order to truly be a believer and follow Jesus, you must deny yourself. This is what Lucifer could not and would not do. Isaiah 14 and 14 says, I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Amen. Yeah, here's the culprit. Social media is the vehicle that boosts one's self-image and self-exaltation. Even when they are failures in real life, they can gain a following and be celebrated online. You know, back in the day when you was a failure, everybody knew it. When you were jive, everybody on the street that you lived on, you ring the doorbell, they look through the peephole, and they say, uh-oh, heard that jive, so-and-so. <laughs> Everybody knew you was jive. Now you can be jive on your street and famous online. Because nobody really knows anybody now. Yeah. But social media is doing this. Colossians 2 and 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and social media. Vain deceit. You're deceiving people with vanity. You got 20 filters on your face. In real life, you're not even that gender. I remember one girl <laughs> came here and she just, you know me in the back. You, you don't remember me? I said, no, I don't know you. I never see you. I be talking to you online. I be talking. I be like, wait a minute. This girl? Yeah, that's me. My goodness. That's vain deceit. That's vain deceit. Yeah, you're deceiving people and all that. And man, you know, you get so used to that. And, and that's just lowering your self-esteem. For people to applaud something that you're really not. Yeah, that's why movie stars and people that, artists and stuff, that's why they drink so heavily smoke so heavily and use drugs so heavily because they know at the end of the day all the applause isn't for them. It's for the person you think they are. See, you're not the only thing, only way you're going to get your real image validated is through God. The manufacturer owns the patent. He's the only one that can truly validate you. People can't do it. Can I keep preaching? Yeah, that, but it's internet. It, I mean, it's social media, man. Folks gonna go to hell because of social media. Yeah, because they found a cheat code. I can get people clapping for me and liking me and saying things even though none of it's really real.
This is causing people to become more selfish than ever before. They put their need for fame, notoriety, and recognition above their concern for others to the point that they will hurt, harm, and destroy people just to be noticed. Philippians 2 and 3 says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. Come on, read that with me. Do nothing from selfish ambition or deceit. You know, there are preachers that will tell you to be ambitious. I had a preacher tell me you need to quit telling folks to, uh, you need to quit telling folks uh, to not be selfishly ambitious. God uses that. I said, you a lie. Amen. I said it just like that too in his office. I said, you lie. No, that's what you want to do. Selfish ambition isn't the definition. That's your plight for yourself. That's your path for yourself. Selfish, self, fish. This is the word. That's your ambition, not God's. Yeah, David didn't choose God to be king. God chose him to be king. So it was, he wasn't ambitiously seeking the kingdom. But later on, the king's, his son was trying to become king, Absalom. And he killed folks and did all kind of dirty stuff and ended up dying. Because of his selfish ambition. So you can't show me in the Bible where God sanctioned selfish ambition. So why are you preaching that? Why are you telling people that? Well, what about people that want to be doctors? Be a doctor. That don't mean you have to be selfishly ambitious. How about have a need and a desire to see people help? Dr. Mark, I bet when he was a kid, he was ripped, had the toys. He was opening them up, trying to fix them. <laughs> when you're playing doctor with your toys, it always starts there. Dr. Janine, I know they did. It's a desire to see people okay. So I'm not, I'm not pursuing this for the money or the fame or the notoriety. I want to see people helped. <laughs> Amen. If Dr. Marco wanted that, he'd have just kept his R&B career going. <laughs> if that's what you was looking for, he'd have just, hey. <laughs> but, that's how you, that, but that's how you get that. That's what I'm saying. This is, it's not sanctioned by God. So be careful with that. When you're pushing your children, right. amen, don't let them select something just because the money is good. Let them select what they feel God wants them to do. What God has given them gifts for. Something that they would do for free. Amen. Amen. The devil did the same thing in heaven. He put his need to be like the most high above concern for his own destiny. He wanted it so badly that he forsook his own future for present popularity. Now look at y'all. How bad did he want it? How bad did the devil want it? He wanted it so bad that he left heaven? Ain't heaven the goal? You're, you, it's as good as it can ever be. And you want your own so bad that you want less than best. Man, you in heaven. You know, this just ain't working for me. Heaven ain't working for you. What? Hey, man. That's what the other angel should have been like. Man. Gabriel is like, come on, Lou. 
You ain't, dude, you don't like this? Like, you got a problem with this? <laughs> like, dude, you tripping. Like, where you gonna go? He wasn't even considering it. Knowing at the end, the God that created him is going to destroy him. He ain't going to kill him. He going to torture him for eternity. You know that's coming. But you want what you want so bad. Isaiah 14 and 15. It says, this is what's going to happen to you. Yet shall... You'll be brought down the hell to the sides of the pit. And they that see thee going to look upon thee and consider thee saying, is this all there was? This is the dude that got me down here in hell. You did it. And then he going to have to get his tail kicked for eternity. Everybody in hell going to want to kick for eternity. Can I keep preaching? Amen. Laying down our lives for others is, is the very essence of being like Christ. He gave his life for us and gave up his heavenly throne to be humbled as a man for us. This is the essence of Christianity. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man do what? See this argument right here? Am I right? Let her be right. And get that X off your picture. Let her be right. But if she real witchy, oh, so you just gonna say that to try to. Amen. You better watch for the signs during the dating, the courting, the courtship. You saw the red X during the courtship. And you ignored it. Your prom picture had that X on it. Yeah, man, you got to know how to just lay down your life. To truly lay your life down, you must give up yourself to the point that you posture yourself lower than others. Oh, this is the hard one. Especially with Afro-Americans. This is hard. This is hard because we were taught, a lot of us, by boomers. We were, we were pushed and prodded to do better and be better and feel better around others. So to posture yourself as less than is almost an insult to us, even though it's necessary in Christianity. You see what I'm saying? To be able to take Rome admit ooh, admit wrong and this is the one apologize 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 it's hard yeah wives it's hard to apologize ain't it it is you ain't got to answer me. <laughs> Just say, come in and say, hey, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, oh, and then say this, I, I, I got to do better. Yeah. See, look, see? Yeah, it's like, it's just like I'm talking to, it's just hard. Where is that coming from? That's the opposite of our posture. That's the posture you're supposed to have. Especially. Now I'm finna get, wait, hey, I'm finna get chauvinistic now. Especially as a help meet. If you're the helper, it's your job to find out what he needs. You can't find that out, Lord and over him. And you can't find that out not communicating. And you definitely can't find that out not apologizing. 
Hey, I, ooh, I don't care. Because I know I'm right. I do. Yes. <laughs> Anybody think about you? Shoot. But you got to be able to. You got to, you, you, you have to be able to. Men, same thing. You got to be able to. <laughs> you got to be able to say, I'm sorry. Huh? Huh? You got to be able to say it. I'm sorry. I messed up. I should have done that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But the man ain't to help me. No, that's, that's the thing. I, as long as I'm in the Bible, I can stay right here. <laughs> but this is, it means you can take wrong, admit wrong, even apologize when you have wronged others. This is the posture of a true servant. And this is what our society is changing. Just changing us. You watching Tyler Perry movies, BET, Real Housewives of Hell. You watching all of this that's getting in you. It's slowly leaching in you. You see the way they treat each other. You see the way they speak. You see their posture and it's leaking in you, leaking. Then you're losing your identity in the relationship. You're losing your Christian identity. Yeah. Because yeah. you're watching a guy who was chosen by Satan to bring this stuff in the black community. That's why Tyler's rich. He's the devil's puppet. Yeah. Brought him in the church, let him lay hands on the bishop to make y'all think he was saved. Then he started coming out with all the most filthy, sexually explicit stuff you've ever seen. And they show most of it on regular cable. What man creates a strip show about men stripping? Now, wait. Ah! You got billions and billions of dollars. And you're going to create a show. And your choice to create a show is a show about men stripping. That's your show. You a man. Your show is men stripping. Ain't nobody got their shirt on. The cameraman don't have no shirts on. Nobody got the shirt. The dude going to get the coffee don't have a shirt on. Ain't nobody got a shirt on. No man can wear a shirt. Women all fully clothed. But the men, take your shirt off. The usher directed people, just no shirt. <laughs> yeah. But that's, those are the movies that the Christian women watch. Christian women. Church women. Let me say church women instead of Christian. The church women watch it. Yeah, it teaches you how to argue with your man. Why did I get married? And then he come home, he don't know you done watched it. He just coming home. That's just what he does. He comes home. Every night did he come home. And he come in. How you doing? I'm all right. Oh, okay, okay. Try to have a conversation. Then you wonder why he don't talk to you. You done watch too much of that junk. I know I'm preaching. You know, this is what a preacher's supposed to do. I ain't supposed to be having a watch party with you. This is what I'm supposed to do. Amen. Some stuff is unacceptable for us to watch as believers. I mean, the more drama, the better. The opening scene, somebody got shot, stabbed, hung, chased by a Rottweiler, everything in three minutes. Just drama, 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 drama. Why is all this drama? <laughs> it's 
because a queen is making the movies. It's a drama queen. I know I'm telling the truth. Hey, that's okay. You know you at ABC. I've been talking about this stuff before anybody was. Yes. So you got to be able to take wrong. You ain't going to learn how to take wrong watching them shows. Admitting wrong and apologizing. Making things better. How can I help how can I make it better? How can I, what can I do? See, that makes you feel a, a way. I mean, he ought to be saying that to me. That's what I'm talking about. Philippians 2 and 7 says, Jesus made no reputation of himself because he took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. Can you imagine having the power of death and life? You got resurrection power where you can snap your finger like Thanos and blow the whole world up. And you got to sit there and listen to folks say stupid stuff. <laughs> Pharisees, mm, so you supposed to be the son of God, huh? She's like, what? <laughs> you just want to stop. Don't make, don't make me <laughs> in all of this right now. Yeah, you got all that power. But he took, he became a servant to men. Washing his disciples' feet in humility. Why did he do that? For an example to us. If he can do that with the power of death and life, you can do it with your little old power. You got the power of tide and bleach. You got the power. Of, you don't have like, you can do it. You can, you, you can just humble yourself and serve somebody. This is a marriage enrichment message. Focus, see? Yeah, amen. You always making movies about relationships and you ain't got one. Now that's my that's the first sign. You don't even like women. How you making all these movies about why I got married and what happened and all this and baby boy and where your wife? Show us how to do it then. Show us how it's done. When we when you can empty out your need for self-exaltation and accolades and notoriety, then you have truly laid down your life. Well, the need to be noticed. When you can walk around and nobody has to say anything about what you're doing, you've laid your life down. When you can function day to day without accolades, I'm not even talking about jumping online. I'm just talking about people in general. Not even noticing. That's how you know. I know this goes against everything that this generation is becoming. But it's the only way to truly become a Christian. Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you. Which what? was also in Christ Jesus. Summary! I told you. I'm getting in and out, man. I'm shortening these messages. I'm 55. In order to be a true follower of Christ, we must deny ourselves. Then what? Take up our cross. Taking up our cross is taking on humility and humbling ourselves before others. Taking up our cross is taking on humility. Humbling ourselves before others. Can you apologize to others even though you feel you were right? Can you settle arguments and disagreements by humbling yourself? 
Can you pray for those that hurt you? Can you love those that despitefully use you? This is the pain of a cross manifested emotionally. Sure, Jesus' cross was much more painful because it was physical, mental, and emotional. But he wants us to endure our cross as well. We must be able to forgive, let go, apologize, humble ourselves, take wrong, and esteem others as greater than ourselves. This is the only way we will see Jesus. If we are not in this posture, then we are servants of the enemy and not Christ. We must learn to lay down our lives like Jesus did so the world can see his love through us. Amen? Amen. Beautiful passage. 1 John 3 and 14. We know that we have passed from death, to, uh, passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in what? death it's just not your husband it's not just your wife it's not just your parents it's your brother whoever hateth his brother is a murderer I did a message on Instagram this morning haters are murderers and I was talking about all of the saved sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost holiness folks that's wishing they hadn't missed Trump Somebody with a family, with children, grandchildren, you wanted that man dead because of how you feel. You're a murderer. And you won't see Jesus. You can he come a shower all you want in church. You can wear the biggest hat. You can wear white every fifth Sunday. You can take him, you can do all that, but you ain't going to heaven if you're wishing your brother dead. The Bible said it. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So why are you so upset over somebody you don't know? How do you get that angry? I know how. You hate your life. You really want to, you really wish the bullet had hit your family, your father, your mother, your ex-husband, your baby daddy. That's what you really wish. But our government, our world just put a face on something. And now you're angry at that. You got to blame somebody because your life is trash. But guess why your life is trash? Because you made it that way. Those were your decisions. Those were your choices. You can't kill that man because your life is trash. That man did well for himself. His life is fine. So I know this to be true because I get told how long I'm going to live every week. Witches and warlocks and folks you know. I saw your death. I saw you dead. Well, I saw you dead. No, I'm just playing. That's what I be. Sometimes I just be want to just, you know, just Negro crack on them. Let's just put the mic, put the preacher mic down. Can I just get ghetto? Lord, let me get ratchet on the ratchet level with them. Yeah, they all, I mean, for the last 30 years, I've been told how many ways I'm going to die. And I, in my mind, I just think, how can what I'm preaching make you that upset? But the Bible said, Stephen, they didn't even know him. And he was a kid, teenager. And he was just teaching what he knew. He didn't even know at all. He just taught this portion that he knew. And the Bible said they started covering their ears, gnashing their teeth, and stoned him to death. Because that truth shined a light on all of their darkness. All the stuff they didn't want anybody to see. 
So I get it. So when they start wishing Trump dead and all that, I, I get it. Folks will wish you dead just because they wish they were. But whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to do what? Lay down our lives for each other. Everyone stand to your feet. Lord, Lord, Lord. Yep. I'm just going to open the altar up. Those that need help laying down their lives. Let's go. Lord, I want to be able to end arguments. I want to be able to end conflicts. I, want, I just don't want to snap at folks and be angry and honory. And I just want to be able to pull back and chill. And I want to let the words and opinions of others roll off of me. And man, it just doesn't hurt me, affect me, change me. Man, I told somebody that the other day. I was talking to them, and they were saying how, you know, people treat them this way and this way, and they're such a nice person, all this and this and that. But I told them, I said, do you know what? I said, the devil has one, one purpose for you, to change you. If the devil can't change you, then he didn't do anything. He wants to change you. So he sends people your way to do things against you to make you react differently than you would normally react and once you keep doing that you've changed you're a different person the devil successfully changed you into what he wanted you to be and you're no longer what God wanted you to be yeah that's why your husband and your wife so shocked they've been married to you 10 years and now all of a sudden you're a different person what happened to you well you let the internet opinions you let the Tyler Perry movies, you let all of this stuff change you. Now you're different. You don't even react the same. You're just not the same person. That was the devil's goal. He wanted to change you. He wants to take God's image away from us. But God can fix that if you're willing to lay your life down. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message. Thank you, Lord, for the truth. And thank you, Lord, for this attribute of all Christians, the ability to mimic you and lay our lives down for each other. So, Father, I pray into this right now, into everyone that has come up, God, that you will help them to be able to take down. Take wrong, apologize, say I'm sorry, let it go, move on. Not let it keep hindering them, hounding them, haunting them. But Father God, take just take that whole worldly societal esteem out of us so we don't see ourselves as less than when we apologize. So we don't see ourselves as less than when we surrender. When we don't see ourselves as less than when we give in. When we become what you want us to become. Father, take that societal misunderstanding out of us. And let us be real, true Christians that lay our lives, that our lives down for each other help us father god to think of other people first help us to think of our husband our wife first our children help us to just put people on pedestals make them feel good when they need to make them feel grand when they need to make them feel special when they need to use us for that god we'll put ourselves to the side for that because we want to be able to esteem others as better than ourselves. God, we know you're gonna take care of us 
if we take care of others. So God, give us that spirit. Come on, lift your hands up. Give us that spirit, Lord. Give us the spirit of giving, the spirit of loving, of caring, of laying our life down for others, emptying ourselves out. Give us the kenosis, absent of our own will and desires, not needing gratif not need and glorification, affirmation, notoriety. Take it away from us, Lord. In Jesus' name. And we surrender to you. We will surrender and we'll lay our lives down. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, hug somebody and say, lay your life down. Lay your life down. Lay it down. Lay it down. Lay that phone down and pick that Bible up. Lay your life down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.